Hello and welcome back to a very special edition of the Midnight Show. As we all know today is Halloween, the most spookiest day of the year. So as a result I have prepared one of my stories for you. And it's a story that has never been published so you're hearing it here first. I really hope you like it and if you do please share it with your family and friends. So sit back, relax and enjoy the Midnight Show. Oh. A tricky dare. What are you waiting for? Jim turned and saw the smirk on Patty's face as they held behind the fence. Bosco and Niall were kneeling behind him. They didn't know whether he was going to do it or not. That old hag will catch me. You know she has eyes everywhere. You checking it out now? Patty wasn't impressed. This was your idea. Yeah, Jim. You told us you'd do it. Niall added. If you don't do it, we'll tell everyone at school you were too chicken to go into old neighbor's place. And with all the bumming you were doing about this, they'll never forget. Paddy stared directly at him, eyes narrowed. Old Maver was just an old woman that lived on her own and kept to herself. Jim knew this. But because she was so old, she could hardly move around and the children of the town started making things up about her. Especially now, at Halloween, they were all saying she was a witch, including Jim. It was his idea to come here tonight. He also knew that every town had at least one old woman who lived on her own and there was no reason to be afraid. All he had to do was run up and steal one of the carved pumpkins off her porch. It was simple really, and with her being so old, there was no way she'd catch him. You doing it or not? Paddy blurted out. Fine then. Jim turned and made his way over to the gate, keeping low behind the fence. When he reached the entrance, he turned and looked at his friends. The look of wonder and excitement filled their faces. He had to do this whether he wanted to or not. There was no backing out now with them looking on. Jim reached up and pulled the latch. As the gate swung inwards he jumped to his feet and sprinted up the garden. It was longer than it looked from outside and he felt fear rushing through him with every step. Goosebumps rippled over his body and his breathing got heavier. He could see the pumpkins laid out on the porch as he ran. There was one on each side of the three steps leading up onto the porch. They were all carved differently. Some were terrifying with sharp teeth and evil eyes while others were sad with droopy features, and then there was the ones that were just a gruesome mixture of both. But it was the two large ones sitting right beside the front door that he focused in on. It was one of them that he had to steal. As he reached the bottom of the steps, he knew which one he was going to take, the droopy looking one. The other looked fierce and he was already frightened enough as it was. He placed his foot on the bottom step and leapt up and landed directly on top of the porch. His breathing was short and frantic as he bent down to lift the pumpkin. It was so much larger than he first thought and he struggled to lift it, his arms failing to get a grip. It seemed like forever as he struggled with the weight and awkwardness of it. He almost dropped it twice. Finally he had it up in his arms and it wasn't as heavy once his back and legs were straightened. He glanced in the window and there was no sign of any movement in the house and he relaxed a little but then moved quickly to the edge of the porch there was no time to spare. He could see his friends cheering him on as he descended the steps. A proud smile swept across his face, but as soon as he stepped off the porch, there was a mighty scream of terror so loud that it stopped him dead in his tracks. Help me! Help me! He's got me! He's kidnapping me! Help me! Quick! Jim had no idea who was roaring, but it sounded like it was right beside him. He could see his friends had stopped moving now and were staring up at him. They looked horrified and a fresh wave of goosebumps washed over him. Save me! Save me! The voice roared again, and this time Jim felt the pumpkin moving. Run! Paddy's voice sounded like a gunshot, and he took off running towards them. Quickly! Bosco roared. The look of terror on his face was so horrible, and Jim didn't want to know what was putting it there. Oh, you're going to pay now! The voice spoke as he ran. My brothers are waking now, and you're going to pay! All of the fright that was in the voice a few seconds ago was now completely gone and was replaced by one of glee that frightened Jim even more. Hurry Jim, run! Paddy shouted as he pulled against the fence. Something hit Jim forcefully between his shoulders and he was knocked forward, stumbling to the ground. He released the pumpkin and watched it roll a few feet away from him as he landed face first, hands and forearms barely saving him. Jim tried to get up with something heavy pressed against his back, forcing him down to the ground. As he struggled to get up, he saw something happening to the pumpkin that was lying on his side. Thick green vines quickly grew out of the bottom of the pumpkin and stretched out along the grass. What is the meaning of this? 
A deep voice came from behind him. I don't know, brother. The pumpkin lying in front of him said as it raised itself up onto one leaf that looked like a hand. And then one of the vines bent like a knee and it stood up. He just came running up and lifted me off the porch. His vine-like arms opened out to the side in a questioning manner. And with his droopy looking face, it was almost comical. Jim couldn't believe what he was seeing, or hearing for that matter. The pumpkin that he'd been dared to steal was now standing before him with arms and legs and talking. He tried to look around to see his friends. They had gone quiet and he wondered if they were still there. Suddenly he was yanked off the ground and up into the air. Leaf covered fingers wrapped around the back of his neck. Why are you here? Jim was now dangling at least three feet off the ground and face to face with the fierce looking pumpkin that was seated at the other side of the door. The candle burned inside giving life to a more sinister looking creature as the face twisted and sorted in his direction. I, I, I'm sorry, it was just a stupid dare of my friends. The glow of the pumpkin's eyes flamed brightly in his face as it stared at him. It turned his head away from Jim and back to the porch. Jim could just about see that the other six pumpkins that had been lined up on his steps were now high in the air as they too had grown and were standing of legs made of vines. Get his friends. We'll let the old woman sort this out. No doubt she's hungry. It has been a while. No! Jim shouted and looked back to the fence. By the time he turned his head, three of the pumpkins were pulling his friends over into the garden. Let us go! Jim shouted. But the large, evil pumpkin just turned and walked back to the house behind the others, carrying him as if he was a feather. Jim watched in disbelief as the three pumpkins carried his friends into the house. They were screaming and struggling to get away, and even though the other pumpkins weren't as big as the one holding him, they were still incredibly strong and they couldn't break free. The one carrying him stopped at the top of the porch and looked back into the garden. You, back to your place. We'll be back soon, but you keep watch until we do. And it's about time you learn to defend yourself. I'm fed up looking after you. It turned again and walked toward the open door. Jim could hear his friends screaming from the basement and he suddenly felt the darkness descend upon his vision. It crept in as he neared the door and just as they passed through the threshold, everything went black. The last thing he heard was the pumpkin's evil voice. I'm sick to my wick of these damn kids. Every year they try something. Who knows? Maybe this year she'll let us eat too. That's it guys, thanks for listening. I really hope you liked the Halloween episode. And if you did, don't forget that the Midnight Chill is available on SoundCloud, iTunes and YouTube. Just type in Darren Geller, the Midnight Chill. There are seven other episodes already there waiting for your listening pleasure. And if you li- really like what you heard, then my books, Love's Curse and Strings are available to buy on Amazon. Links are in the description below. Or if you'd like to hear some more, I'll be back next Tuesday and every Tuesday after that with the Midnight Chill. So until then, yeah, white.